Hello, on this video, I'm going to talk about the for loop and also about the range. The range and the for loop go together very well. So the for loop is great when you have a range of values to loop through. Before we write any code, let's take a look on the documentation for range. So I'm going to search for ranges on the python.org website. Then I'm going to search for ranges here in this page. So the ranges so the range has a couple of options for us here. The first option is when you have a single argument. And then the second option, you have two or three arguments. When you put one argument only, that's where it stops. When you put two arguments, that's where it starts, where it stops. And then you can also put the step. Now, if you keep on reading, there are a couple of things here that we're interested in the range must be integers. So that's the first thing to note. Then if the step argument is omitted, it defaults to one. And the other one is if the start argument is omitted, it defaults to zero. And then finally, if steps is zero, it throws an error for you. Now let's take a look on the code. So the first thing here is to create a range. So I'm going to create a range and I'm going to assign it to R. So R equals range. And if I put the number four here, then this range would be starts with zero and one, two, and three. This range does not have the number four. The stop parameter is not included within your range. So if I do a range of Three, for example, that would include zero, one, and two. It would not include three. If the range now is two comma four, then this range would include the number two and three, because we're starting at two. On this one here, the default starting number will be zero because you're only passing one parameter. And the same thing here. And here, since you're passing two parameters, it takes two as your starting point and four as your stopping point. And the step here would be one. And I pass three parameters. Let's say I'm passing three, comma six, comma two this time. So this range would be three. And then because the step is two at the time, so the next one would be five. And then six would never be printed because six is out of range. All right, so now that we understand the range, let's take a look on the for loop. So the for loop is very easy. The word for I in a range, and I'm going to put here range four for now. And then a semicolon, and then here I can write whatever code I want for the for loop. For now, I'm just going to print the value I. So now if I run this program, it's going to print zero, one, two, three for me. And there it is. So again, it does not print four because four is the stopping point. So now on the print here, I want to print on a horizontal instead of vertical. So I'm going to put here another parameter. And with that, I have a the numbers on the horizontal. All right, so I can also change here. So instead of putting the range here, I can put the variable where I'm storing the range. So I'm going to put here R. So print 0, 1, 2, 3. Now I want to use the range X. So if I use the range X, it should be 0, 1, 2. Now I want to use the range Y. It gives me 2 and 3. And then finally, I want to use the range Z. 
run and I get three and five. Now, the other thing you can do here, you can also run this backwards. So instead of having the step of a positive number, you can have this step as a negative number. So I'm going to put negative one here. And then I have to put a number here where I want to start and I want to end at six. So then this sequence here will be 10, 9, 8, 7. And the 6 is not included. And I can also do a by 3. I'm going to choose a much smaller number here now. I'm going to choose a negative 10 this time. And then I go from 10 to negative 10. Negative 10 is not included. Alright, so that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.